Hey, what's up guys? This is Couch Potato Mike, and before we start this video, little disclaimer, uh, the following content is intended for adults 18 and up. If you were under the age of 18, uh, please choose one of my funnier videos that uh, is not going to have a bunch of naughty stuff in it. Uh, so, uh, because this video will be, uh, I will be reading a book that does contain adult situations, adult language, and pretty much adult everything. So viewer discretion is advised. And on with the show. Well, we are here today in the book club to read uh, chapter three, Tuesday, June the 21st, 2011, of the book Freed by E.L. James. We're continuing on, and let's go ahead and get started without further ado, guys. Tuesday, June 21st, 2011. Elena's eyes are like flint. Cold, hard. She's in my face, angry. I was the best thing that ever happened to you. Look at you now, one of the richest, most successful entrepreneurs in the United States. Controlled, driven, you need nothing. You're master of your universe. Now she's on her knees, in front of me, bowed, naked. Her forehead pressed to the basement floor. Her hair a shining coronet of lightning against the dark wooden boards. Her hand is stretched out, splayed, tipped with scarlet nails. She's begging. Keep your head on the floor. My voice echoes off the concrete walls. She wants me to stop. She's had enough. My grip tightens on the crop. Enough, Gray. I wrap my fingers around my cock, hard from her mouth, covered in crimson smears from her lipstick. My palm moves up and down, faster, faster faster. Yes. I come and come with a loud guttural cry. Painting her back with my cum, I stand over her, panting, heady, sated. There's a crash. The door flies open. His frame fills the doorway. He roars and the blood-curdling sounds fill the room. No. Elena screams. Fuck. No. 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 He's here. He knows. Elena stands between me and him. No! She cries, and he hits her so hard she falls to the floor. She screams and screams. Leave him. Leave him. I'm in shock, and he hits me, a right hook to my chin. I fall and fall. My head spins. I'm faint. No, stop the screaming. Stop. It goes on and on. I'm under the kitchen table. My hands on my ears, but they don't shut out the noise. He's here. I hear his boots, big boots, with buckles. She's screaming and screaming. What did he do? Where is she? I smell his stench before I see him, and he peers under the table, a lit cigarette in his head. There you are, you little shit. I wake instantly, gasping for air and doused in a sheen of sweat with fear streaking through my veins. Where am I? My eyes adjust to the light, and I'm home. I'm at home, a scala. The coming dawn casts a faint rosy glow over Anna's sleeping form, and the relief rushes through me like a cool autumn breeze. Thank fuck. She's here. With me. I blow out a long, steadying breath as I try to clear my head. What the hell was all that about? I rarely dream about Elena, much less about that horrific moment in our shared history. I shudder as I lie staring at the ceiling, and I know I'm too wired to get back to sleep. I contemplate waking Anna, wanting to lose myself in her once more, but I know that's not fair. Last night she more than proved her stamina. She has to work later today, and she needs her sleep. Besides, I'm ill at ease. My skin's crawling, and the nightmare has left a sour taste in my mouth. I must be severing my... It must be the severing of my friendship and business relationship with Elena that's haunting my psyche. After all, Mrs. Lincoln has been a lodestar for over a decade. Shit. It had to be done. It's all over. All of that is over. Sitting up, I run my hand through my hair, careful not to disturb Anna. It's early. 5.05, and right now I need a glass of water. I swivel out of bed and find I'm standing on my tie, discarded after last night's diverting shenanigans. 
A delicious memory of Anna invades my senses, her hand bound above her head, her body rigid, her head tipped back in ecstasy as she clutches the pale gray slats of the headboard, while I lavish my attention on her clitoris with my tongue. It's a much more pleasing recollection, recollection than the remnants of my nightmare. I pick up my tie, fold it, and place it on the nightstand. It's unusual for me to have nightmares when Anna is sleeping beside me. I hope it's a one-off. I'm grateful that I have an appointment with Flynn later today so I can dissect this new development with him. Pulling on my PJ pants, I grab my phone and exit the bedroom. Perhaps some Chopin, or Bach will suit me. As I sit down at the piano, I check my messages, and there's one from Welch, left at midnight. That catches my eye. Welch, sabotage suspected. Initial report, first thing in the morning. Fuck. My scalp tingles as the blood drains from my head. My fears have been confirmed. Someone wants me dead. Who? My mind rolls to the few business associates I've outplayed over the years. Woods? Stevens? Carver? Who else? Waring? Would they stoop to this? They all made money. Lots of money. They just lost their companies. I can't believe this could be connected to my commercial activities. Perhaps it's personal? There's only one person who looms large enough in that regard, and it's Link. But Elena's ex-husband already took his revenge on her, and that was years ago. Why would he act now? Perhaps it's someone else, a disgruntled employee, an ex. I can't think of anyone who would do this, apart from Layla, they're all doing well. I need to process this. Anna, shit. If they're coming after me, they could hurt her. Fear steals through me like a ghost, leaving goosebumps in its wake. I have to protect Anna at all costs. I text Welch. Meeting this morning, 8 a.m., Grey House. Welch, copy. I text Andrea so she can clear any meetings I may have, then email Taylor. From Christian Grey, subject, sabotage, date, June 21st, 2011, 518, to J.B. Taylor. Welch has informed me that Charlie Tango may have been sabotaged. The initial report will be with us later this morning. We're meeting at Grey House at 8 a.m. Reinstate Reynolds and Ryan if they're still available. I want Anna accompanied at all times. Sawyer can stay with her today. Thanks. Christian Grey, CEO, Grey Enterprises Holding, Inc. I need to release all my pent-up nervous energy and decide on a workout. Sneaking into my closet, I change quickly and quietly, not wanting to wake Anna. While I run on the treadmill, I watch the markets on TV, listen to the Foo Fighters, and wonder who the hell wants to kill me. Anna smells of sleep and sex and a fragrant orchid in the fall. For a moment, I'm transported to a happier time, when I'm hassle-free, and it's just me and my girl. Hey baby, wake up, I nuzzle her ear. She opens her eyes, and her face, already soft from the sleep, glows like a golden dawn. Good morning, she says and runs her thumb across my lips and gives me a chaste kiss. Sleep well, I ask. Hmm, you smell so good. You look so good. I grin. It's just a well-tailored suit. I have to go into the office early. She sits up. Already? She glances at the radio alarm. It's 7.08. Something's come up. Sawyer will stick close today and keep the press at bay. You okay with that? She nods. Good. I don't want to frighten her with the news about Charlie Tango. I'll see you later. I kiss her forehead and leave before I'm tempted to stay. The report is brief. FAA Accident and Incident Reporting System. Errors. General Information. Data Source. Accident and Incident Database. Report Number. 20110453923. Local Date. 17-June-11, City, Castle Rock, State, Washington. Airport name, Portland Heliport. Event type, incident. Mid-air collision, not a mid-air. Aircraft information. Aircraft damage, substantial. Aircraft make, EU-RC-PT. Aircraft model, EC-135. Aircraft serial, EC-135-P2. Airframe hours, 1470. Operator, GEH Inc. Type of operation, air taxi slash commuter. Registration number, N124CT. Total aboard, 2. Fatalities, 0. Injuries, 0. 
Aircraft weight class, under 12,501 pounds. Number of engines, two. Engine make, turbom. Engine model, Arius 2B2. Environmental operations info, primary flight conditions, visual flight rules, secondary flight conditions, weather not a factor. Flight plan, flight plan filed, yes. Pilot in command, pilot certificate, commercial pilot. Pilot rating, rotocraft slash helicopter. Pilot qualification, qualified. Flight time total hours, 1,180. Total in make model, 860. Total in last 90 days, 28. Event remarks. On June 17, 2011, at approximately 1420 Pacific Time, an EC-135 N124CT owned and operated by Gray Enterprises Holdings Incorporated had a major incident. The aircraft was stable when the aircraft suddenly pitched and the number one engine firelight illuminated. The pilot secured the number one engine with a fire bottle and attempted to return to SeaTac on the remaining engine. Number two engine firelight illuminated. The pilot made an emergency landing at the southeast corner of Silver Lake. On landing, the pilot deployed the second fire bottle and shut down and evacuated the aircraft. No injuries were reported. The pilot deployed the onboard portable fire extinguisher. The aircraft manufacturer is examining the aircraft engines, and the initial assessment is that the damage is suspicious and may be the result of malicious interference. The NTSB will require further review. In my office, Welch, Taylor, and I pour over the report. Welch's grizzled face is craggier than ever in this harsh morning light, his expression grim. At the moment, the NTSB only suspects sabotage, but we should proceed as if there was malicious interference. To that end, we've checked through all the CCTV footage and the helipad in Portland and found no suspicious activity. He shuffles in the chair and clears his throat. However, there's an issue in the GEH hangar at Boeing Field. Oh? Two of the cameras were inoperative, so we don't have complete coverage. What? How did that happen? What the fuck do I pay these people for? We're endeavoring to find out. Well, Chancers, his voice deep and gravelly like an old car exhaust. It's a major breach. No shit, Sherlock. Who is, who's responsible? There's a rolling shift system, so it's down to four or five people. If they're found to be negligent, they're fired, all of them. Sir, he glances at Taylor. At present, we have no leads as to who's behind this, Taylor says. There's going to be a forensic examination of the aircraft, Welch adds. My hope is that they'll turn something up. I want more than fucking hope, I raise my voice. Yes, sir. Both men speak at the same time. Each of them looks contrite. Hell, it's not their fault. Gray, get a grip. I continue in a more measured tone. Find out who's fucked up at the hangar, fire them, and as soon as we have any idea of what occurred, I want to know. In the meantime, make sure the jet's secured and it's safe. Yes, sir, Taylor says. We're on it, Welch growls. He's pissed. He should be. This has happened on his watch. The National Transportation Safety Board is all over this, and I expect they'll brief law enforcement as the inquiries continue, and, if appropriate, invite them to investigate in parallel. I'll circle back with the NTSB to confirm this. The police? I ask. No, it'll be the FBI. Okay, maybe they'll find something. Where are we with the backup close protection? I ask Taylor. Both Riddles and Ryan are available and we'll start today. I want to keep Anastasia out of this. She doesn't need the worry. And I want to see the short list of who might be behind this. I have to say I'm at a loss. My team is compiling a list of potential suspects, Welch says. I'll do the same. Sir, now that this is on the FAA site, the press may pick it up and start asking questions, Taylor says. Shit. You're right. You can brief Sam now and I'll get him up here. Will do, he responds. If this is going public, I have to tell Anna, too. How the hell did we come to this? Sabotage? I do not need this shit right now. I leave the two men discussing likely suspects and poke my head out of the door. Andrea looks up from her computer. Mr. Gray? Ask Sam and Roz to join us. Will do. There's a knock on my office door. It's Andrea. Would you like more coffee? She asks. Please. 
On my computer screen is, is a list of the acquisitions I've made since I started my company. I'm going through each one to see if I can find any potential suspects. So far I've drawn a blank. It's depressing. Deep down I'm worried about Anna. If someone wants to hurt me, she could end up as collateral damage. How could I live with myself if that was the case? Latte? No. Black. Strong. Yes, sir. She closes the door and an email pops up for my girl. From Anastasia Steele. Subject. Quiet before slash after the storm. Date. June 21st, 2011. 1418. To Christian Gray. My dearest Mr. Gray, you are most quiet today. This concerns me. I hope all is well in the land of high finance and business dealings. Thank you for last night. You are quite the mouthful, winky smiley face. A. X. X. P. S. I see Mr. Bastille late this afternoon. Anna. A warm flush spreads under my collar and I loosen my tie. She is quite the wanton with her choice of words. I type my response. From Christian Gray. Subject. Storm is here. Date. June 21st, 2011. 1425. To Anastasia Steele. My darling fiancé, I must congratulate you on remembering your Blackberry. The storm clouds are gathering here, and I will apprise you of the weather report and coming deluge when home. In the meantime, I hope Bastille is not too hard on you. That's my job, winky smiley face. Thank you for last night. Your stamina and your mouth continue to amaze me in the best of ways. Winky smiley face, winky smiley face, wink winky smiley face. Happy Face, Christian Gray, Meteorologist and CEO, Gray Enterprises Holdings, Inc. P.S. I'd like to collect your remaining belongings from your apartment this week. You're never there. From Anastasia Steele, Subject, Weather Predictions, Date, June 21st, 2011, 1429, to Christian Gray. Your email has done little to assuage my concerns. I comfort myself in knowing that should it be needed, you own a shipyard and can no doubt build an ark. You are, after all, the most competent man I know. Your loving Anna, XXX. P.S. Let's talk this evening about when I move in. P.P.S. Is meteorology really your thing? Her email makes me smile, and I run my index finger over the X's. From Christian Gray. Subject, you are my thing. Date, June 21st, 2011, 1432. To Anastasia Steele. Always. Christian Gray, Madly in Love CEO, Gray Enterprises Holdings, Inc. It's 5.30 when Dr. Flynn waves me into his office. Good afternoon, Christian. John, I amble over to the couch, sit down, and wait for him to take his chair. So, big weekend for you, he says, sounding affable. I look away. I don't know where to start. What is it, he asks. Someone's trying to kill me. Flynn pales. A first, I think. The crash? He asks. I nod. I'm sorry to hear that. He frowns. My people are all over it, but I'm at a loss as to who it might be. You have no inkling? I shake my head. Well, he says, I hope the police are involved and that you find the culprit. It will be the FBI, but my main concern is Anna. John nods. Her safety. Yes. I've put additional security at pl in place, but I don't know if it'll be enough. I swallow my right rising anxiety. We've talked about this, he replies. I know you loathe feeling out of control. I know you're panicked about Anna, and I understand why you feel that way. But you have the resources, and you've put measures in place to keep us safe. That's all anyone can do. His gaze is level and sincere, and his words are reassuring. He smiles and adds, you can't lock her up. My laugh is cathartic. I know. I also know you'd like to. But put yourself in her shoes. Yeah, I know. I get it. I don't want to drive her away. Exactly. Good. That's not all I want to talk about. There's more? I let out a long sigh and recount in the briefest of terms the argument with Elena about at my birthday party and the subsequent rows with my, each of my parents. I have to say, Christian, it's never a dull moment with you. Flynn rubs his chin in response to my resigned smile. We only have an hour. What do you want to talk about? I had a nightmare last night about Elena. I see. I've cut ties with her, as per my parents' requests, gifted her the business. That's generous. I shrug. 
It is, but I'm okay with that, I think. Of course she's still calling, but it was only twice today. She's been a huge influence in your life. She has, but it's time for me to move on. He looks thoughtful. Which did you find more upsetting, the argument with Elena or your parents? Elena's was awkward because Anna was in the room. We were spiteful of each other. My regret is clear in my tone, and deep down, I wish we'd parted on better terms. And Grace was so mad at me. I've never heard her curse before, but the argument with my dad was the worst. He was an asshole. He was angry? Very. I ignore the stab of guilt in my guts and my disloyalty to Carrick. I wonder if he's projecting his anger at himself onto you. You can understand why he felt that way, can't you? No. Yes. Maybe. Flynn continues. Whether you agree or not, your father probably thinks that Lena took advantage of a vulnerable adolescent. It was his job to protect you. He failed. That's probably how he sees it. She didn't take advantage. I was more than willing. My frustration echoes in my words. I am so done with that argument. John sighs. We've discussed this many, many times, and I don't want to get into the debate with you about it again, but you might want to try and look at the situation from your father's point of view. He said I might not be husband material. Flynn seems taken aback. Oh, how did you feel about that? Angry. Worried that he might be right. Ashamed. In what context did he say it? I waved my hand dismissively. He was lecturing me about the sanctity of marriage. He said if I had no respect for that, I had no business being married. John's brows draw together. Since Elena was married, I clarify for him. I see. Flynn purses his lips. Christian, he says gently, your father may have a point. What? Either you were a willing participant in a relationship with a married woman, a relationship that caused to her marriage, and much more, considering what happened to her. Or, you were a vulnerable adolescent who was taken advantage of. Which is it? You can't have it both ways. I glare at him. What. The. Hell. Marriage is a serious business, he says. Fuck it, John, I know that. You sound just like him. Do I? That's not my intention. I'm just here to give you some perspective. Perspective? Fuck. I glare at him, then down at my hands, as the silence grows between us. Perspective, my ass. I think Carrick's wrong, I mumble eventually, and I realize that I sound like the surly teen my father still thinks I am. Of course he is, no matter what my views are on your relationship with Mrs. Lincoln. Over the years, you've demonstrated a constant commitment to her. I think it's your regret at terminating all contact with her that's wearing on your conscience. There's no regret... I snap. I've done this willingly. Guilt, then? I sigh. Guilt? I don't feel guilty. Do I? John remains impassive. Hence the nightmares? I ask. Maybe. He taps his lip with his index finger. You're giving up a long-standing, pivotal relationship to please your parents. It's not for my parents. It's for Anna. He nods. You are rejecting everything you know for Anastasia, the woman you love. It's a huge step. He smiles once more. In the right direction, if you ask me. I gaze up at him, not knowing what to say. Think about all I've said. Time's up, he says. We can continue talking about this when I see you next. I get up, feeling somewhat bemused. Flynn, as ever, has given me a great deal to chew on. But until we speak again, I have one outstanding question. How's Layla? Making good progress. Well, that's a relief. It is. I'll see you next week. Taylor is waiting outside in the Q7. I'm going to walk home, I inform him. I need some time to think. I'll see you back at Escala. He gives me a pained look. What? Sir, I'd be much more comfortable if you rode in the car. Oh, yes. Someone's trying to kill me. I scowl as Taylor opens the rear door, but resigned, I climb inside. Am I no longer master of my own universe? My dark mood worsens. Where's Anna? I ask Mrs. Jones when I enter the living room. Good evening, Mr. Gray. I believe she's in the shower. Thanks. 
dinner in twenty minutes, she asks as she stirs the pot on the stove. The aroma is tantalizing. Make it thirty. Anna in the shower has possibilities. Mrs. Jones tries to hide her smile, but I see it and ignore it. I go in search of my girl. She's not in the bathroom, but the bedroom, standing in the window, wrapped in a towel and dewy from her shower. Hi, she says with a huge smile that vanishes as I approach. What's wrong? Before I can reply, I wrap her in my arms and hold her tight, inhaling her sweet, just-showered fragrance. It soothes my soul. Christian, what is it? She runs her hand up my back, pressing me close. I just want to hold you. I bury my face in her hair that's twisted into a chaotic top knot. I'm here. I'm not going anywhere. Her voice is tinged with tension. I hate it when she's anxious. I bring my hand up to cradle her head, tip it back, and then press my lips to hers and kiss her, pouring my anxiety into our kiss. She responds immediately, caressing my face, opening up to me, her tongue sparring with mine. Oh, Anna. When she pulls away, we're both winded and I'm hard. Fucking hard for her. What's wrong, she asks, gently cajoling me and then scrutinizing my face for clues. Later. I murmur against her lips and start walking her backward to the bed. She grabs at my lapels and tries to divest me of my jacket while her towel falls to the floor, leaving her naked in my arms. Reaching up, I tug on the elastic, holding her precarious bun and release her hair so that it tumbles down around her shoulders and breasts. My hands skim down her back and I cup her backside, pulling her against me. I want you. I can tell, she wriggles against my erection. Fuck. I grin and gently push her onto the bed so that she sprawls across it in all her naked glory while I stand over her, my legs between her knees. That's better, I whisper, my earlier peak forgotten. Mr. Gray, as much as I like you in a suit, you seem to be a bit overdressed. Gone is her anxiety. Her eyes shine up at me, full of teasing desire. It's arousing. Well, I'll have to see what I can do about that, Miss Steele. She bites down at her lower lip and runs her fingers down between her breasts. Her nipples are rosy, erect, and ready for my mouth. It takes all my willpower not to rip my clothes off and bury myself in her. Instead, I grab the knot of my tie and gently tug it so it slowly unravels. Once it's loose, I toss it on the floor and undo the top button of my shirt. Anna's mouth opens in a sexy, appreciative gasp. Next, I shrug off my jacket and let it fall to the floor where it lands with a soft thud. I think that's my phone, but I ignore the sound and yank the hem of my shirt from my pants. Off or on? I ask. Off, please, now. Anna doesn't hesitate. I grin and ease my left cuff link from its place, then repeat the process with the right cuff. Anna squirms on the bed. Keep still, baby. I whisper while I undo the lowest button on my shirt, then move my fingers up to the next, and the next, my eyes not leaving hers. When my shirt is undone, it follows the way of my jacket, and I grasp my belt. Anna's eyes widen, and we drink each other in. I drag the end of the belt loop and undo the buckle, and as slow as I can, I tug the belt free. Anna angles her head slightly, watching me, and I notice the rise and fall of her breasts increasing as her breathing accelerates. I fold the belt in half and let it slide between my fingers. Oh, Anna, what I'd like to do with this. Her hips rise and fall, too. I tug both ends of my belt so it snaps against itself with a sharp crack. She doesn't flinch, but I know she hasn't signed up for this, so I drop it on the floor. She forces out a shallow breath, looking both relieved and maybe a little disappointed, I don't know. But now's not the time to think about it. I step out of my shoes and dispense with my socks and undo the button on my pants and slide down the fly. Ready, I ask. And waiting. Her voice is husky with lust. But I'm enjoying the floor show. I grin and drop my pants and boxer briefs, freeing my straining cock. Kneeling on the floor, I trail kisses up the inside of her calf to her thigh, along the line of her pubic hair up to her navel, to each of her breasts until I'm hovering over her, poised and ready. I love you, I whisper and ease into her, kissing her at the same time. 
She groans, Christian, and I start to move slowly, savoring her, my sweet, sweet Anna, my love. She wraps her legs around me, her fingers diving into my hair and tugging hard. I love you too, she purrs in my ear and moves with me, so we're in sync, together, us, as one. And when she falls apart in my arms, she takes me with her. Anna. She nuzzles my chest, and I tense, waiting for the darkness, so she stops and raises her head. As much as I liked your impromptu strip tease and its aftermath, are you going to give me the weather report that you mentioned in your missives and tell me what's wrong? I trail my fingertips up and down her back. Can we eat first? She smiles. Yes, I'm hungry, and maybe I need another shower. I grin. I like making you dirty. I sit up and slap her backside. Up! Oh, I told Gail we'd be half an hour. You did? Anna is scandalized. I did, I grin. Mrs. Jones's Thai green chicken is delicious, as is the glass of Chablis we're enjoying with it. So the initial report came back from the FAA, and it will go public at some point. Oh? Anna looks up from her meal. It appears that Charlie Tangle was tampered with. Sabotage? Exactly. I've upped our security arrangements until we nail who's responsible, and I think it's better if you stay here for now. She nods, her eyes round with alarm. We have to be vigilant. Okay. I arch her brow. I can do that, she adds hastily. Good. That was easy. But she looks stricken. Hey, don't worry, I murmur. I'll do everything in my power to protect you. It's not me I'm worried about. It's you. Taylor and his people are all over this. Don't worry. She frowns and places her fork on her plate. And don't stop eating. Anna toys with her bottom lip, and I reach across to clutch her hand. Anna, it's going to be okay. Trust me. I won't let anything happen to you. I change the subject, hoping to move to a safer topic. I was Bastille. Her expression lightens with her fond smile. He was good, thorough. I think I'm going to enjoy my sessions with him. I look forward to sparring with you. I thought we did that already, Christian. I laugh. Ah, touche, Anastasia, touche. Okay. Well, it looks like that is the end of this chapter, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, that is the end of this chapter. I hope you guys enjoyed chapter three. Uh, so far, it's shaping up to be a very different uh, experience than uh, the book uh, Fifty Shades Freed. Uh, Fifty Shades Freed actually opens with them, I believe, already on their honeymoon. And then jumps backwards in time to handle certain things. This one uh, is uh, going uh, straight chronologically, uh, as his usually do, because they're divided by dates and everything. Except for, you know, flashbacks and stuff like that. Uh, but it's uh, quite a different experience um, than the other way around. And I'm enjoying it so far, and I hope you guys are too. Uh, so uh, please uh, stay tuned. Uh, the next episode will be out in hopefully a couple of days. So... For the Couch Potato Mike YouTube channel, I am Couch Potato Mike reminding you to uh, subscribe and hit the bell icon so you know when uh, more of these uh, come out and more of my videos in general. And please give me a like, a thumbs up over here like this, uh, except, you know, down there or wherever it is. It's down there somewhere. Uh, you know, hit a thumbs up. Help me out with that pesky YouTube algorithm. Help get me in there. Uh, I am uh, very close to uh, 200 subs at this point. When I hit uh, 250 subs, I'm going to be giving a doing a Funko Pop giveaway. Uh, so uh, stay tuned for that. But in the meantime, uh, I'm Couch Potato Mike reminding you as always that life is an experiment and your results may vary. See you next time, guys.